What would you think if I told you that we are not merely a product of the universe, but rather, the universe is a reflection of ourselves, a projection of our consciousness? Although this idea might sound bold, it has been conveyed by enlightened individuals throughout various eras and traditions. And it's not just from the spiritual realm. Renowned scientists and researchers, such as Robert Lanza, have also explored and supported this perspective. Robert Lanza developed his theory of biocentrism as a radical way of understanding the universe, where consciousness is fundamental in the creation of reality. Lanza, a biologist recognized for his work in regenerative medicine and stem cells, combined concepts from quantum physics with biological principles to propose that life and consciousness are not mere byproducts of the universe, but are central to its existence. According to Lanza, time, space, and matter do not exist independently of conscious perception. Instead, they are constructs that emerge from consciousness. The theory of biocentrism challenges the traditional view of physics, suggesting that life creates the universe rather than being created by it. Lanza developed this theory by observing how consciousness seems to influence quantum phenomena and by questioning the fundamental nature of reality from a biological perspective. In this video, we will dive into this fascinating idea that connects science, consciousness and spirituality. We will explore the true nature of matter and reality itself, approaching it from different angles. We'll see how, by accessing the quantum field through our consciousness, we can alter the vibrational energy that we perceive as matter and consequently transform our reality. Additionally, we'll examine the powerful role that our subconscious mind plays in the reality we experience. We'll discover how, through specific techniques, we can reprogram these subconscious patterns to create a life more aligned with our desires. And not only that, we'll also explore how, by modifying our brainwaves and using visualization, we can directly influence the quantum field, shaping and transforming reality in our favor. At the end of the video, you'll find a practice that you can perform to achieve this. Exploring the nature of reality. Have you ever wondered what lies behind the reality you experience? Is this reality we perceive truly material and physical? When we observe matter at the atomic and subatomic levels, we find that it is mostly made up of empty space. Only a tiny fraction of its volume is occupied by the nucleus and electrons. Within the nucleus, protons and neutrons are composed of quarks and gluons, which are not matter in the traditional sense, but excitations of force fields. In quantum physics, the universe is believed to be composed of constantly fluctuating quantum fields. Subatomic particles, such as quarks and electrons, are simply vibrations of these fields. These fields represent forms of energy and probabilities, meaning that the more we analyze matter, the more we realize that what we perceive as solid is actually 99.99999% empty space. What we perceive as matter is actually energy organized in a specific way, vibrating at a certain frequency. The entire universe that we perceive as solid, tangible and physical is not composed of matter in the traditional sense, but of energy. Quantum physicists call this fundamental energy the field. This field is defined as invisible forces in motion that influence the physical world. It's fascinating to see how this definition aligns with what has been used for millennia by sages and enlightened individuals from various traditions to describe the spirit. Our thoughts and emotions have a vibration and energy that can interact with this field, thereby shaping our reality. Everything in the universe is in constant vibration. And just as particles are organized according to their vibration, the same occurs on larger scales, like attracts like. 
Let's remember two of the seven hermetic principles of the Kybalion. Everything vibrates and, as above, so below. Resonance. Resonance is the phenomenon that occurs when one vibration or energy frequency influences another, amplifying it. If you vibrate at a frequency of scarcity and fear, you will resonate with similar situations, increasing your level of vibration in the frequencies of fear and scarcity. Everything that resonates at the same frequency syncs up. The same happens in reverse. If you're vibrating positively, you will sync up with more positive situations, increasing your positive vibratory energy. In other words, our personal vibrations determine what we manifest in our lives, connecting us with experiences that are in tune with our own energy. As you raise the frequency of your vibration, the world around you adjusts to that new vibration. Thus, when you move to a higher dimension of consciousness, the reality you experience also changes, even creating retrocausal effects. The all is mind, the universe is mental, the Kybalion. The entire universe is mental. What you perceive in reality is not material. It's a projection of your beliefs, subconscious programs and expectations, similar to what is observed in the double slit experiment. The double slit experiment is one of the most famous experiments in quantum physics, demonstrating how conscious observation can influence the behavior of particles. When scientists fire subatomic particles, like electrons, through two slits without being observed, these particles act like waves and create an interference pattern on a screen, behaving as a probability field rather than a solid particle. It's as if the particle passes through both slits simultaneously, interacting with itself and generating a pattern similar to the one formed when two stones are thrown into a lake. However, when a device is installed to observe which slit the particle passes through, the wave pattern disappears, and the particles behave as if they had only passed through one slit, acting as solid objects. This experiment suggests that the act of observation alters quantum reality, and that consciousness can influence the behavior of matter. Until consciousness intervenes, the matter in the experiment exists as multiple probabilities that coexist and interact. Only the act of observation defines one of those possible probabilities, causing it to manifest as something solid and defined in our three-dimensional world. Einstein once stated that the field is the sole agency governing the particle. It's not the particle that controls the particle, but the field. This implies that if we can modify the information in the field, we could influence matter itself. Typically, humans live with a materialistic understanding of reality, feeling at the mercy of life and victims of circumstances. This perspective leads us to react to our environment building our lives based on the inputs and experiences life presents to us. And from our point of view, this approach seems completely reasonable since it aligns with what we perceive through our senses and how we've operated since childhood. What we often don't realize is that a significant portion of our reactions come from pre-installed programs in our subconscious mind, which govern around 70% of our behavior. During the first seven years of life, a child's brain primarily operates in a theta state, a brainwave frequency of four to eight hertz. This state is characteristic of active imagination, creativity, and a high susceptibility to subconscious programming. In theta, children absorb information from their environment without critical filters, adopting beliefs, behaviors, and emotional patterns that can influence them throughout their lives. Essentially, theta is both imagination and hypnosis, and it's estimated that 95% of our actions and decisions stem from these programs acquired in childhood. The subconscious mind doesn't think 
or create. It simply repeats behaviors as if a button is pressed. Meanwhile, the conscious mind houses our desires, dreams, and creativity. One functions like software running programs, while the other has the capacity to create, to be, to exist. You may wake up with a desire, but throughout the day, you repeat programs that don't necessarily support your dreams. When you wonder why things aren't working out, the answer might be that you're unaware that more than 60% of these subconscious programs are discouraging, self-destructive, and limiting. However, both quantum physics and epigenetics offer a different perspective. We are not merely victims of our environment and genetics. In reality, we are the creators of our experience. And what we see in our three-dimensional reality is a projection of our consciousness and subconscious programs. This opens up the possibility that by changing our consciousness, we can also change the reality we experience. Many might be shocked by these claims or dismiss them as New Age rhetoric, but this is what enlightened individuals who transcended the limitations of their minds and egos have been trying to convey. They realized that everything is Maya, as the Hindus call it, an illusion. Similarly, quantum physics and various researchers are reaching similar conclusions suggesting that it's highly probable we are living in some form of simulation. Zhuangzi, one of ancient China's most important philosophers, reflected on this over 2,000 years ago when he wrote, I dreamed I was a butterfly, fluttering around in the sky. Then I woke up. Now I wonder, am I a man who dreamed of being a butterfly, or am I a butterfly dreaming I am a man? Consider this. Every night when we sleep, we dream. Entire worlds unfold within these dreams, indistinguishable from reality to us when we are immersed in them. In these dreams, countless events occur and many characters appear. But where do these worlds and characters, which we perceive as separate from us, come from? Indeed, they arise solely from your own mind, from your consciousness. In a similar way, and according to the principle of fractality, the world we experience during our waking life is just another mental projection, but on a larger scale. As above, so below. As Albert Einstein once said, reality is merely an illusion, albeit a very persistent one. If this is true, we should be able to alter reality to create the life we desire, just as you can change a dream once you become lucid through consciousness. Not the fragmented consciousness of our ego, but the consciousness of unity, the consciousness of the quantum field, of the all. So, why do most people face a life full of difficulties, feeling out of control and at the mercy of circumstances? The answer lies in their lack of awareness of their own inner power and the constant programming we've received since childhood through our environment and power structures. We are taught to be obedient, to feel small, isolated and disempowered, because it makes us easier to control. We are programmed to be biological robots in service to the matrix. But the good news is that we have the power to change our reality by using the power of our minds and consciousness. So, it's time to pause for a moment and ask yourself, where is your consciousness? What are you thinking about? What subconscious programs are you operating from on autopilot? These programs and thought patterns have a significant influence on your emotions and actions, which in turn largely determine the life you experience, the reality you see projected around you. Creating our reality. To stop being victims of circumstances and become creators of our reality, we must reprogram our minds, replacing limiting and outdated programs with new, conscious and empowering ones. Moreover, we must learn to create not only from matter, but also by accessing the quantum field and, through visualization, projecting our desires into the three-dimensional reality. 
reprogramming the subconscious. The first thing we should do is become a witness, an observer of our own actions and behaviors. When we react to life circumstances, we need to observe ourselves and identify our programs, especially the negative ones, and work on them. Instead of just reacting, we should stay alert. And even if we do react, reflect on that reaction to change it if it doesn't serve us. We may not change our reactions immediately, but through constant observation, we can gradually correct our automatic responses. So the first step is to become aware of our subconscious programs. Most of the limitations and deficiencies we experience in life stem from beliefs about deservingness and self-love. If you do not feel worthy of being loved or deserving of good things, you will unconsciously push away the possibility of good things coming into your life, no matter how much you consciously desire them. Replace limiting beliefs with positive affirmations. After identifying our limiting beliefs, especially those based on our self-love and self-esteem, we can listen to positive affirmations that reinforce those beliefs every night before sleeping. When we are about to sleep, our brain waves decrease and move into theta, the same state we had when we were programmed as children. But this time, the intention is to choose how we reprogram ourselves. We can create affirmations based on our limiting beliefs and subconscious programs that we want to change and record them in an audio. These affirmations should always be stated in the present tense. Instead of saying, I will be abundant, they should say, I am abundant. The idea is to listen to these affirmations as we fall asleep and continue listening to them as we drift off, as our subconscious mind will keep hearing and integrating these affirmations, including some relaxing music or, even better, binaural sounds can help. Essentially, what we are doing is self-hypnosis. Again, repetition is key here. Just like when you learn to drive or play an instrument, repetition is fundamental to introducing a new program. Be consistent. Creating from the quantum field. To create from the quantum field instead of from matter, we need to connect with the source and create from fullness. By focusing our attention on the present, we transform from physical beings to pure consciousness. In this state, we withdraw our energy from the three-dimensional reality, our senses and our body and deposit it into the void. This void is filled with frequencies and energy, with probabilities waiting to materialize into our three-dimensional reality. When you open up to the nothing, your brain becomes more coherent. The compartments that were previously divided unify and the entire brain begins to resonate at the same frequency. This state of resonance makes the brain function as a single neural network with synchronized hemispheres, creating a sense of fullness and connecting you with the field, with the whole. As the brain shifts from beta waves to slower waves, electrical signals are generated that represent your intention. And the clearer your intention, the stronger the signal. At the moment you stop being yourself and access this state of unity, you are impacting the consciousness of the whole as you have become that same consciousness. Then the entire universe responds to your request, synchronizing with your intention. But another key factor is the energy of your heart. Pure love is the energy of the source. Imagine you are a ship your mind's intention acts as the rudder that guides you, and your heart as the engine that propels you. You should fall in love with your desire, feeling it as if you are already experiencing it, feeling the joy of the desire already manifested in your life, and the magnetic field of your heart will take care of attracting it to your reality. The heart generates a magnetic field that extends up to three meters. The more coherent your heart is, the more energy it contains and the more you can attract your future. You send the signal through your expanded consciousness and attract the experience through the feeling of your heart. 
you do not need to search for anything. When your energy resonates with a possibility in the quantum field, you begin to see synchronicities, coincidences, opportunities, and significant events that bring you closer to what you desire. Not only in trivial details, but in transcendental aspects of your life. Next, I leave you with a practice to create from the quantum field. Find a comfortable place where you can sit or lie down, preferably with dim light. Count down from 100 to zero, visualizing the numbers in the space between your eyebrows. Elevating your eyes slightly, about 20%, helps the brain enter alpha waves. If you get distracted or lose count, simply resume from where you left off. When you reach zero, you will be in a state of deep relaxation. Your breathing and heartbeat will have calmed and your brain will be vibrating in more coherent alpha or theta waves. In this state, visualize what you want to manifest in your life, whether it is an experience, a personal change, or any goal you wish to achieve. Imagine you are already living that experience. Visualize yourself already in the achieved experience, recreating every detail in your mind. Visualize yourself as if you were programming a game that you will then experience in your three-dimensional reality. Live the scene as if you were there, feeling every detail. Imagine touching a surface and feeling the textures, making the experience in your imagination as real and vivid as possible. But the most important thing is to focus on the emotions. Feel full of gratitude and excitement because your desire has already been fulfilled. You can practice this exercise at any time, but an excellent option is to do it before sleeping and then listen to an audio with positive affirmations until you fall asleep. It is also ideal to do it just upon waking, as at that moment the brain is in waves close to alpha. During the practice, it is crucial to remain in a state of deep relaxation, forgetting about your body and environment and focusing on the experience in your imagination. Remember, the fundamental aspect of this process is the feeling that accompanies your visualizations. The images help you create an emotional experience and define your intention, but it is the emotion that will make you vibrate at the frequency of your desire, attracting it by resonance. This game you are programming, the universe, is very creative, and it will guide you towards your destiny through synchronicities, unexpected events, and serendipities, making the journey more interesting and enriching. Of course, we should also take physical actions that support our desires, but these will be actions that arise in a fluid and natural way. That's it for today's video. I hope this information has been useful and enriching. Thank you very much for watching until the end. See you soon.